All right. So uh, my name is uh, Espen, and I work here as a developer, uh, obviously. Uh, I'm going to talk about Sanity and Grok and GraphQL and how all these things tie together in a uh, nice and formal way. So one of the reasons that you might have read on our documentation for why we didn't choose GraphQL as our uh, primary query language is that it's not a general query language. It's not something that you can just plug into any data source and start querying your data. You have to define your schema and your API prior to being able to ask uh, for the data that you want, which has its benefits, but it's also not great for iterating over uh, a data model or uh, doing a prototype. Whereas Grok is a general query language, so if you've used the tools like a JQ or uh, something that can iterate over a JSON structure and filter and map those into kind of the shapes that you want, you can do the same thing with Grok. Uh, so that's why we picked it, it's, uh, as uh, Simon sort of described earlier. So this query, for instance, can be run on any, in theory, any JSON uh, that you give it. It will iterate over all the documents uh, and find anything that matches this. And uh, you don't have to define, for instance, that the books uh, property is an array to be able to, to do a count on it. Uh, and to show you just, because uh, I, I know there, there's a lot of people that sort of get the idea, uh, I guess. But um, being able to actually implement something like uh, just uh, Writing arbitrary data like age 32 and breed is human, and then creating this uh, human, and then being able to query for anything where uh, age oops, is larger than 30 is kind of powerful. You don't have to write any API for this. And being able to prototype in this way just to sort of uh, get a JSON representation of the data that you, that you have and uh, import that into Sanity and start querying that for that in a structured manner like you can with Grok. I think we all can agree that that's pretty f a powerful uh, thing to have. But we all also, uh, there's kind of a, a different uh, aspect to it as well. Uh, GraphQL, for instance, can't uh, always give you the response that you want. So for instance, as Rich Harris points out here, if you, have, if you want to query for all the movies with a genre that matches action and then get the director's name, then you'll always be returning uh, the, the structure that matches the query that you ran. You can't flatten this into just the names of the directors. Uh, whereas with Grok, that's uh, basically just saying that for each of these items, I want to just, just get the director property and the name property of that director. And then you're stuck with just the uh, list of strings. So in our documentations, we also say that uh, in a Sanity a GraphQL environment, you would carefully craft a specific GraphQL API powered by GraphQL under the hood, and that we would be providing this as a standard facility in our stack at some point in the future. So the future is soon, probably. Uh, I've created a prototype that I'll try to show you. So I have a totally standard Sanity uh, Studio project here. And in an upcoming version of Sanity, you would be able to write Sanity GraphQL and then have it uh, return uh, a description or generate a, a, a schema and serve that schema. So in this case, I'm generating a schema, which will actually take a look at the um, the local schema files in your studio and then generate a JSON representation of that that's uh, uh, suitable for a GraphQL API. And then once you have that schema, you can run Sanity GraphQL serve, which will start a local development server. And then that will give you a GraphQL, which is a tool that you can use for querying your data. And the nice thing about GraphQL, uh, as opposed to Grok at this point is uh, things like being able to uh, automatically get a uh, documentation for all the types in your system. Oh, sorry, should I? Something like that. Uh, so you can do things like um, introspect the beer type here and see that it implements the document uh, interface 
and you have a title and a brewery and all that kind of stuff, which is very helpful. And that's just for out of the box. You can just, uh, it also annotates with anything that you've written uh, for your descriptions in your sanity fields in the schema. So if you write a proper description, you'll also get that in the, in the documentation. And uh, you can just start querying for whatever you want here. Uh, oops. I have a touch bar, which I hate. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now I have done something, which I, OK. Sorry. I have to display. Ah, this is tiny. Much tiny. I also recently switched to Mac from Linux, so I have no clue what I'm doing. Um, there. So I can start uh, querying for data. So um, what it generates out of the box is just a, a basic thing where you can ask for uh, any of the data types that you've defined uh, by ID or all of, the, uh, all of the documents of a certain type and then filter on those. So for a beer, you can do or let's do a venue, and then ID, and then, for instance, this. And then you get back all the fields that are available for this specific type, which is also nice with GraphQL, is that you know what data type this is going to return. So you can create this kind of tooling that's very rich. So out of this, you get that. And then you can um, even go further. Like, uh, this is a, this is a, um, a reference in uh, Sanity. But you can still query it as if it was just uh, an object. So I can get back a URL here. Uh, if I go back to my node terminal here, you can see this is actually a very thin uh, sort of conversion to, from GraphQL to Grok. So the query looks very much similar uh, in these two examples. You can also do more complicated stuff like all beers and then filter that by, say, uh, ABV over uh, ABV greater than 5. And then for each of those, I want the ID, then title, and ABV. And uh, yeah, you can, you can do stuff like brewery. Maybe I want the brewery or the, yeah, you get the idea. Um, what else? This is running against staging, so I can show you the super new awesome feature that uh, Siemens showed, the cell selection thing. You can do a fragment. Uh, sorry. Uh, number stuff on beer. Then I want the ABV and the rating and the something else, IBU. And you, are, you can then use that inside of anything that will return a beer. So dot, 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 number stuff. And as you can see here, that will use the new syntax for the um, uh, conditional selection. So this is, uh, it also supports things like uh, variables, obviously, which is just uh, mapping to sanity variables. It works in the same way as in sanity. And yeah, it's, uh, it's a kind of a cool prototype. And uh, it works uh, quite well out of the box. So I'll talk a little bit about how it's implemented and what it actually gives you. So it's decoupled from the back end. This runs on your local machine, as you can see. So you can iterate on the schema uh, and change it if you want. And the root level fields uh, can be expanded or customized uh, to uh, match any Grok query. So as you can see, any, any of this is just a filter. So when I say all beers, then that contains the basic projection of underscore type equals beer. And then it just adds constraints to that filter, which is defined on the root level field. Um, it also, so it can be self-hosted for full control. We'll be open sourcing sort of the individual uh, parts of this uh, solution. So you can run the server on your own servers if you want and expand that so you can sort of uh, combine sanity with uh, something that queries your local uh, legacy API or anything like that. 
Uh, and since it's just generating the JSON specification for an API, we can persist this to the um, Sanity uh, document store, which is what we'll do to actually uh, expose a GraphQL API. So we'll just say Sanity GraphQL deploy, and it will uh, just create the document in our document store, and that will automatically be picked up and start serving uh, data from your uh, data sets. And what's nice about that is uh, these specifications have an identifier, so we can use that as part of the URL, and you can create sort of different versions or scopes. Uh, so you can, uh, if you've created a legacy API that you want to move away from, you can still iterate on that, and you reuse the same fields. You just create a new specification. Uh, so this gives you a pur purpose-built API. Uh, which is uh, nice when you have a stable system, when you've uh, sort of grown out of the prototyping stage and want uh, a very like st um, strict API that you can uh, provide to your developers uh, in order to, for instance, get the, the discoverability of a GraphQL API to see all the queries that you're able to run. And you can also use this to only expose the queries that you actually want to expose. So, um, so if you just want people to be able to query for movies, but not the directors or whatever you, uh, other data, then you could just expose that as a query. Uh, you can also provide uh, tokens and security rules on a per field basis. So you can set uh, different scopes for different queries. Uh, so this will allow you to utilize all the cool tooling uh, that I showed you, like Graphical, uh, but you can also use Apollo and Relay and Vulkan and all that kind of front-end front -end frameworks and clients for a ton of different languages. Uh, GraphQL also has mutations, and I think we'll just be mapping those directly into Sanity because the mutation and patch system in, in Sanity is quite powerful already, and there's no sort of... Um, there, there isn't really a, a predefined, con conceived notion of what a mutation should do in, in uh, GraphQL. It's just, uh, here's an action or a mutation that you should perform. These are the arguments. And so we'll just be providing the JSON, uh, same JSON format that we use for mutations currently. Subscriptions is something that we'll probably not implement, uh, at least not in the first version, since we already have a listener API that uh, sort of it's basically the same thing as you would implement through GraphQL. And since GraphQL doesn't define what the transport of a uh, uh, subscription should be, there's no really, you don't get a lot of benefits since there's no uh, like pre-made clients um, or you'd have to pick a specific client like a Apollo listening or listen over WebSockets or something. So uh, the summary is, this thing is on the way. Uh, it's a prototype at this point, but we'll uh, keep working on it. We've uh, got a couple of uh, hard edges that we need to figure out, things like uh, inline creation of types. And uh, it's important to say that it's not a Grok replacement. We'll never be phasing out Grok. It's just a complement, so it's just an addition. We'll be using Grok as the underlying query language uh, to provide you with the data that you need to, to serve your uh, GraphQL API. And well, obviously, as you might notice, I'm very excited about this stuff. So if you want to, if you want to talk about it, or you have any questions, I'd love to talk to you, uh, either here or uh, on Slack or anywhere where you can find me. Uh, any questions?